you and I first met three years ago when I was potentially an opponent uh, yes. for your position, and I appreciate your service. I appreciate that you're, you're now serving that position and reaching out to the community this way. Um, you and I are both also attorneys, and we've both taken constitutional law, and so we both understand this jurisprudence stuff that you mentioned earlier. And I appreciated that you started out this conversation by mentioning that the legislation that you are proposing is not in accordance with the Constitution as it's been, been uh, interpreted by the Supreme Court at this point. At this point, the Supreme Court says that your proposed legislation is unconstitutional because your proposed legislation uh, is, creates this 20% and threshold. Absolutely, and that's why I fundamentally disagree with the Supreme Court's interpretation on Kilo. Okay, and so I think that's part of the reason that some of us think that your proposed legislation doesn't, doesn't have much of a shot of, of passing. But just as you know, yeah. Supreme Courts have had a tendency over the years to change course mm -hmm. and interpret the Constitution. And certainly we're on, a, on a more conservative trajectory. And we're trying, setting, we're and trying to be part of the effort to stand with property owners and with individuals to, to say to the court as well as the nation that this is a voice that needs to be respected. So my question is, by creating this 20% threshold, you are actually creating a massive entitlement program that will have to be paid for somehow. Somehow, instead of only compensating landowners who have a full takings, which is constitutional right now, we are going to have to pay landowners who have only a partial taking, which currently is unconstitutional. How about How if, do it, you if, plan it, if to it actually uh, prohibits or stops the government from the damn taking in the first place? So my question is, how do you plan to pay for this massive new entitlement program in which the state will have to compensate not just for full takings, but also for partial takings? Stop any exposure and the liability that's associated with it. Now, let me, do let me just that, does that, that mean? Does that mean? Does that mean that there are not going to be potential claims under this law that have to be compensated by taxpayers? Yes, it does. And this is where we're going to have the conversation as national priorities as to is that an appropriate priority for government to spend taxpayer dollars on? In my opinion, it is because you're standing for individual property owners and standing on behalf of them in this issue of government. Action. That gets to a second constitutional problem that I have with your legislation. What you're saying is that you are attempting as the federal government to come in and quell state action. You are attempting no. as the federal government to come in and force the state government to do what you want. I think that's a state's rights concern. What well, we've opened it up is... federal law. I heard you say that you're asking the federal government to quell state action. Is yeah. that not what you're saying? Local government to make sure that local government takes this into consideration and individual Make government. sure that local government does your bidding. And we may disagree. We may disagree. You want, to stand, <laughs> you want to stand on the side of big government. I get it. I'm just taking the side of You're the one who wants to raise taxes. You're the government. That's what I heard. And I'm trying to stand on behalf of it. I'm opposed to big government guys like you who come in and tell my municipality what to do. Okay. My municipality. And that's why we recognize that local government can still take action. But it needs to think it through all the way. And I don't think local government does it as good for individuals today as it did. What about in 2010? Though. When you talked about, when you were running for Congress, I can quote you on this. I was at, in the room, I was a freshman at CCC when you said this. You were talking about the, the government that does the best bidding for the people is the closest government. You agree with that, correct? I Still. absolutely agree with Still. that. Still. Okay, so then at that point, you were okay with the state reviewing this, right? Reviewing the fracking bin. You were 100% gun ho with it, right? Reviewing and taking the local action and not spending taxpayer dollars to do a federal review. Why now that the state decided to ban fracking, are you willing to spend taxpayer dollars, our taxpayer dollars, for because an entitlement program that doesn't benefit me or any person in my generation that's trying to come back to the southern tier? I'll answer jobs? that very specifically. Uh, because representing folks, <laughs> Representing folks across uh, 11 counties, you hear a lot of different inputs. And when you have people come to your office, and, and people come to our office just as you have come to this town hall meeting today, and they express to us that, you know, this is the fourth generation, this is the fifth generation 
of this family farm, that I was relying on this property right in order to preserve this family farm and continue that way of life, that gets my attention. So that individual deserves just as much of a voice as your voice does. And what, we're saying, and what we're saying, just so we're clear, just so we're clear, we're not saying the government can't take action, but there's consequences to that government action that I think have to be taken into consideration. Sounds like a protection racket. And what it's to do <laughs> is to protect individuals. So if we, we're, we're going to disagree racket. on this, I can clearly see we're going to disagree on this. But what we're trying to do is find that balance. But let's go some more direct questions.